So he is in Alcoran in remote work and travel at the same time. You know? Yeah, like like digital nomad I guess. Four four remote workers who have secretly work from abroad without, without telling, without their employers knowing, describe how they keep up the charade. Look at this guy here. Wow, this looks like a flavella or something. Like in Rio. Mm, look here, working off the laptop. I guess you, got, you, you need really good internet to pull this stuff off. Where you can work out like that. This guy said, I went paragliding in the Andes Mountains. I went to a desert in Peru and went sandboarding, a marketing specialist told Insider. After doing all that, I just wasn't going to go back to the office. Anonymous. So Insider spoke with four remote workers who traveled abroad without their employer's knowledge. They described checking the local weather and even covering up an earthquake in Ecuador. One worker said the ploy had allowed him to pay off debt and improve his quality of life. Yeah, I guess you can, you know, if you're traveling, the rent you will pay is much less if you give up your your apartment or whatever at home in the U.S. Um, let's see. So work from home policies have allowed employees to log in from their living rooms in their pajamas. But some workers have taken the idea to an extreme, secretly logging in from across the world while keeping their bosses in the dark. It can be a tough charade to keep up. A marketing specialist based in Chicago who since 2020 has secretly lived in more than five countries while working nine to five jobs recalled joining a Zoom meeting from Colombia as his co-workers lamented a recent storm that had covered the midwestern city in snow. And there he was in Colum Colombia. Let's see here. Um, it's kind of hard to read this. Okay, so I need to go to the beach right now, he recalled a co-worker saying, I am so tired of this awful weather. <laughs> yeah, I really want to go to the beach. This is so terrible, the marketing specialist replied. Little did his snowbound compatriots know, he was actually a 10-minute walk from the Caribbean Sea. <laughs> and had just returned from an outdoor yoga session. He is one of four remote workers interviewed by Insider who have secretly worked abroad without their employer's permission. They spoke of the condition of anonymity, but Insider has verified the identities and the employment status with documentation. They say one trick to avoid getting caught is reading the local news and tracking the weather. The marketing specialist said these two best practices helped him maintain the rules, during which he says he earned a pay bump and a promotion. His social media accounts are public for work. So he posts pictures of his travels only in private Instagram. Stories limited to close friends. When the specialist company, so <laughs> let me just stop here and say that. And he, he posts to uh, private Instagram, stories limited to close friends. So that means on your job, try not to have any close friends, you know. Can you imagine having the close friends in your job? And then they see, you know, on your Instagram picture, you're in Colombia, 
you're on the beach, you know that's it. That's the end of it for you. It's finished. Your ruse is over. Because most of the time, those people you meet in the job are not really your friends. <laughs> you know? Probably your competitors. So, this guy is right. Don't give these people on your job and your Instagram account or whatever. When the specialist company requires staff to return to the office earlier this year, he found a new remote job at a non-profit. He said that even though this employer would likely be more lenient, he keeps his international adventures hush-hush. I went paragliding in the Andes Mountains. I went to a desert in Peru and went sandboarding, he told Insider. After doing all that, I just wasn't going to go back to the office. Over the past two years, he's traveled to Panama, Peru, Colombia, Ecuador, the Dominican Republic, and Mexico. He said he still pays rent for his apartment in Chicago ah, and subleases it to friends when possible. But even in the months, he has to pay rent, he said. He spends less money than he did working full time in the windy city because other things cost less. Look at this picture here. Isn't that nice? Hmm. Overlooking the, what's that? Coca Canyon in Peru. For some, traveling full time is indeed more affordable than living in the U.S. A former Miami resident told Insider that after his rent was raised to $2,700 a month from $2,150, he and, he and his husband quit their in-person jobs and moved to South America. Once to set up shop in Ecuador, they both accepted fully remote positions in marketing and consulting so they could covertly travel. He said that now their housing costs average about 500 a month for two bedroom A, B and Bs. The positions require them to be based in the US, but they didn't divulge that they were actually traveling across the world. The couple's new employers and co-workers believe they still live in Miami. The former resident said they even paid over $1,000 for flights to pick up a work laptop from their home, from their former home, former Florida address. But he said that one, that one time expense was nothing compared with the money they are saving, adding that. They had been able to put 75% of their income to what paying off debt, a financial burden that had made them feel way down back in Miami. If we tried to do the exact same thing in Miami as far as paying off our debt that rapidly, we're literally living on ramen noodles, he said. We can get lunch for $2.50 every day. The exact same plate of food in Miami would have easily cost you between $12 and $15. He said that while the arrangement had made for some awkward encounters with co-workers, we have asked on multiple occasions why who was asked on multiple occasions why he's wearing a windbreaker in Florida. The financial savings are worth it. When co-workers asked how his weekend was, yeah, that's another thing, you know. When you work in an office, people always ask that. Because I remember I did some work for, um, I think it was Arch Care. Yeah, Arch Care and the computers. And every time you show up on Monday, people always ask you, you know, how was your weekend? What did you do? Did you got this? Did you do? All that kind of stuff. To me, I really don't like those questions, you know, about what I do. On my, what I do on my weekend is my business. But that's how it is, you know. It's part of the office culture. 
And I'm not really into that, you know. I don't care what you do on your weekend. What you do, you do. It doesn't really move me one way or another. But anyway, getting back to this. So when coworkers ask him, ask how his weekend was, he said he contrived scenarios based on the couple's past life of brunching and beaching. When in reality, they bathed in volcanic hot springs and hiked through the Andes. But some scenarios are impossible to prepare for, like the time in July when the Airbnb in Ecuador started shaking from an earthquake <laughs> in the middle of a client meeting. Do you know what Florida doesn't have? Earthquakes, he said, adding that he told the client that he was temporarily in South America and they didn't think much of it. Hmm, look at that. Right there, those pictures. That's like living la vida loca, like the son says, right? Ricky Martin, living la vida loca. The couple who formerly lived in Miami pictured at the swing at the end of the world in Banos, Ecuador. Banos is for like showers in English translation. And at Lake Humante in Peru. A Berlin-based remote worker at a multinational tech company has secretly worked from the Canary Islands and Portugal to all insider that the key to pulling the scheme off had been respecting his colleagues, working hard and resisting any urges to show off. I didn't tell anybody, even colleagues who I'm friends with outside of work. He said, I didn't that he doesn't have any social media. It doesn't feel the best always. But that's the only way I can maintain this lifestyle. He said he uses his personal computer with a VPN, which is virtual private network, to ensure the company can track his location and always has the computer's clock set to Berlin time in case he has to spontaneously share his screen. He said he's also aware of any background noises that could give away his location like the tropical birds in the Canary Islands. Wow, it sounds like living a life like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, except he's not killing anybody. There's there's no birds in Berlin chirping in the middle of winter, he said. In the summer, he returns to Berlin and works from the office about three times a week, an option he said he values as much as his ability to work remotely. I really like my job. I really like my team. That's why I don't want to necessarily quit, he said. But I like my job because they don't ask so many questions because it's flexible. So those go hand in hand. As soon as they remove that, it's not worth keeping anyway. So if they fire me, it doesn't matter. So software engineer from Minneapolis left his corporate job this spring to work for a tech startup. While many companies have allowed employees to work remotely full-time, most do not permit working internationally because of regulatory concerns and risks regarding taxes, insurance, immigration law, and cybersecurity. It can also create compensation concerns for companies that calculate pay with the local cost of living in mind. A software engineer from Minneapolis who attempted to work virtually from Puerto Rico this winter said that even though he was connected to VPN, his company's IT team reported that his IP address was coming from outside, <laughs> outside the U.S. 
he said he got a stern message from his team's director who told him to get back to the States immediately. Wow. This spring, he left the company for a tech startup with more lenient international travel policies. My general philosophy is it shouldn't matter where I'm working, he told Insider on a video call from Spain. As long as I've been exceeding expectations, who cares? If I'm in Spain or South America or Minnesota. So that's the end of the article there. Let me say, um, with me, I mean, I don't have any remote work. The work that I usually do, sometimes I do remote work, but for like insurance companies. But, you know, they send you like a laptop and they send you like, um, sometimes two monitors so you have you have your monitor you have your your laptop that you could see on and then sometimes you have like two different monitors so there's no way i can go traveling with something like that you know and then uh confidential information too and then they do use vpns also you have to you have to sign in to access confidential information using the VPN. But what happened when I travel personally on my own, I have a Google number. And with my Google number, because I do get calls, and when people call me, you know, like, you know, for interviews or so forth, to do an interview, I was in, what was it, um, yeah, Mexico City two years ago. And uh, I had to do an interview, uh, but I had it came in over my Google number, and it was very clear. It was came right through, very good Wi-Fi, and so forth. So it it also helps having like a, a Google number because with the Google number you don't have to worry about paying international rates. You know, you just getting the calls coming through, just like you in the same city you live in in the United States. So that's important. So this guy here in the comments says, so, so what? If you're working remotely, I don't care if you live on the moon as long as you get your job done. I don't think, well, I think like the article said, uh, they mentioned certain, you know, difference, difference in pay, depending on, even here in the United States. Um, some companies will say, look, if you work remote from home, you know, you move or a different city, we're going to pay you less. You know, so somebody who works in New York City, for example, uh, let's say they move to a little town in South Carolina. Usually for the same job, there's going to be a different pay differential. So if you can live in South Carolina, and you're earning the same salary from New York, you're going to live well, you know? You're going to be able to live in like a bungalow, some home with uh, lots of bedrooms, bathrooms. And you can't do that in, in, in New York, you know? For the little apartment you pay in maybe in Manhattan. So, they, so this is what they consider, the companies. And that's why they told a guy... Uh, to get back, I think it was from Minnesota, he was in Puerto Rico, they told him to get back. The IT team, they probably told the IT people, check to see if people are out of the country, you know. And definitely, um, you pay less money uh, if you're out of the country. But there are some people, because there was an article recently where people went down to like Mexico City and they cause the price of uh, like the housing to go up and the Mexican people would more rent, want to rent to them instead of like Mexican because they're bringing a lot of money. But I don't think their company has any problem or maybe they work like freelance. You know, if you work freelance, it doesn't matter. If you work for the company, then yeah, then they would say, oh, we don't want you to work here, we want you to work there. But if you're working as a freelancer, like a digital doorman 
and you you know you're doing your work like saying like that site called Upwork. Upwork has a lot of freelance people. Then they don't care as long as long as your client gets his job done and they pay you. They don't care where in the world you're working from. That's the point. As long as you know what you're doing, you see. So this is really this is really interesting, you know. But um, yeah, who wouldn't like to be able to be be traveling around the world while you're working?